So here's what he had to say. You think you must be strong. You must fight this on your own. You act tough, but you are not tough at all. For it is I, the Lord your God, who is strong. And through me and my strength, you are made strong. Don't you see, child, you can do nothing without me. Don't you understand that nothing is a surprise to me? I see all and know all. Many of you are fighting a battle you cannot win, not within yourselves. But when you are weak, I am strong. When you cry out to your father for help, it is then that you are made strong, for my strength is given to you. Do you understand what the Spirit is saying? I make you strong because you lean on my strength and not on your own. For what child can fight a big what child can fight a man bigger than himself? No, surely he will go to his earthly father and ask him um, ask for him to help with the bully he is facing. Why would you do any different with your heavenly father? This is the time you must not only trust me with your whole heart, but you must must lean on my strength to get you through. Your enemy knows your weakness and is using it against you. When you come to me and lay it all down, I will pick it up. That which is used against you and, and fight this battle with you and for you. I will give you strength. I will tell you to pray, child, and I will teach you how to pray. When you do along with fasting as I lead you, you will find how much stronger you are, how victorious you are. But when you lean on your own understanding, your own strength, your enemy wins and will take you down. Suddenly, you find yourself and your thoughts not your own. You find yourself discouraged. Did I not say he is the father of lies? Yes, and surely he will lie and put thoughts in your head that are not your own. He will tell you how wicked you are. He will remind you of your past or even things you have just done in secret. Now your heart is troubled. You say, God will not want me now, for I have sinned against him. I have done wicked. No, these are all caps the way he said it. No, child, I want you more than ever. Do you think I did not know what you would do? In other words, he wants you, and he already knew what you were about to do. He already knew what sin you were about to commit. He already knew the thoughts or the actions you were about to take, okay? So he's saying, did you not think I would know what you would do? Surely I know the end from the beginning, but I am a God of mercy and grace. I will forgive you if you humble yourself before me with a remorseful heart and repent. I will make you new. What you have done will now no more be remembered. I will throw it as far as the east is from the west. Guard your heart. Guard your ears. And what you listen to, take all thoughts captive. Rebuke and cast off wrong thinking in my name. I am here for you, my children. Do you hear me? Do you know how loved you truly are? For I gave my life for you. I thought of you so highly. Why would I change now? I shall not. Come and lay all down at my feet. Let me pick you up and restore, heal, and make you new. Walk in peace, says the Lord your God. Okay, so when this was coming, uh, some of the things he said, he said before in, in a, in a uh, I don't remember how long ago the word was, but he said that a lot of, uh, a lot of us, all of us really, not just some, would be getting thoughts that weren't something normal to us. It's like, where'd that come from? If you're having anything like that, we go, where did that thought come from? That's not the way I think. That's not something I would ever think of. That's your enemy putting those thoughts in your head. They could be anything in the world, okay? Anything in the world. But more than not, it's going to be things that would be compromising to God's word. It would be things of wickedness or it'd be things of self, uh, self-demeaning, self-hatred. That's the kind of stuff it would be. It could even be thoughts of suicide. Anything like that is what he was talking about. And when he was talking to me and I was typing this, and he was talking about our strength and his strength, I was seeing and feeling what he was talking about. So many of us are in such battles, unbelievable battles. And what he said is, don't lean on your strength. Come and sit with me. Come sit with me. Come lean on me. 
my understanding, my strength, because that's the only way you're going to win these battles, that some of the battles we're under right now are so overwhelming that if we fight it within ourselves, we'll fall every time. Do you understand? I had a battle myself I'm in right now, and I won't even go into what it is, but it's, it's, it's kind of a hard battle for me, and I'm really struggling with it. And today I was going through it again and it was hard. And I finally just went into my room and I sat and had time with the Lord and I just started crying. And I just started singing, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. And I felt it lift a little. The thing is, is it doesn't mean he's going to take the battle away. But if you would do what I did today, keep going to your father. Keep doing what you know to do. What does he say to do? Fast and pray, even if you don't feel like it. Praise him, even if you don't feel like it. I was just praising and worshiping right now, and I felt him come on me, and I felt it lift again. But it doesn't mean, guys, he's going to take the burden away. It doesn't mean the battle will be gone. He just said again, the diamond in the rock. If he takes away the battle, you can't get the buffeting you need to become that shining diamond. We're in the last of it, guys, the very last. And so the... The, the fight, I, I can't even tell you, the staff, my staff, what we're going through, more than we ever have since we started this ministry. I mean, the physical, emotional, every kind of attack you can think of is coming down on us. And I just told the girls, let's start going together as three and going into heavy prayer. And that's what we're doing. That breaks it, guys. Prayer is so powerful. So we got together Wednesday morning about 10 o'clock, and we're going to do it again this coming Wednesday. And we got into prayer, and we started praying in tongues, and some of us had visions, and some of us got words, what's going on, and things lifted. They actually lifted. The battle I was under suddenly lifted. And another one, her battle all of a sudden got better. And what the Lord showed me, because that morning, it was that Wednesday morning, I said, Lord, what is going on? And he spoke to me, and he said, you are being spiritually attacked. So I started to rebuke it. I started pleading the blood of Christ over myself. And I tried to praise the best I can. Do it anyway. Do it the best you know how, and God will take it from there. And then I told Cindy, I said, Cindy, the battle is beyond measure this morning. And she says, let's call Cheryl. I said, good. Let's do a three-way call. And we did. And here she was going through a severe battle. So we just went into praying, and we, and we, blocked, and we stopped it. I don't know how it happened, but it just lifted. And afterwards, within, I don't know how long it was, I said, I felt something lift off of me. We stopped it. You can stop it. If you need to, call a fellow Christian who you know is a good prayer warrior and get into praying. Pray in tongues. Do whatever you got to do. But you need to do it the way God says, and that is get your armor on and start rebuking, start commanding in his name that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Start pleading the blood of Christ over your mind, spirit, soul, body. Start commanding his name that every demonic spirit that's come against you shall be canceled in Jesus' name. Start commanding. The Lord just gave me the word curses. Because right now there's a lot of witches and, and covenants and all this that are praying against the Christians. Okay? So start commanding in the name of Jesus that they are blocked. And, and whatever curses they try to throw at you get sent back. They cannot, they cannot penetrate. Okay? I, I know that God's timing for every word is always perfect. And I know there's some people listening that are going through what I'm talking about. The reason I know, while I was worshiping, I was going to do it tomorrow or Monday. While I was worshiping, God suddenly said the, the, the uh, word strength. And I'm like, yeah, I need to do that. And I'm worshiping some more. Strength. And he kept doing it. I'm like, good, you want me to go live now, don't you? Somebody needs to hear this. So he is never late, guys. Whoever you are, or may, maybe a few of you, he's got your back. I promise you he's got your back. I'm going through a heck of a fight. So is Cindy. So is Cheryl. And we are pushing forward. Persevere, guys. Persevere. Yes, Kathy Miller, start, you, you're right. The two-edged sword. Let's start, let's start speaking out the scripture. I am more than a conqueror. 
I am victorious. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My God has taken the keys to hell and the grave, and he has won the war. He has won this fight. He is, was victorious, therefore I am. Start re-encouraging yourself. And remember, you're not the only one in battle. Every single child of God right now is in the worst of the battles. If you're being used, remember the word. The Lord just reminded me of it. Uh, remember the word he gave just the other day. Those that are used the most are the most uncomfortable. The more you're going to be used, the more you're being used now, the more uncomfortable you're going to be. Because there's a few reasons, remember? He's refining. He's getting you ready to be called. And you've got to be ready. And then on the other side of it, your enemy is fighting against you and attacking. But no matter what it is, God still has your back, guys. He really does. Now, let me tell you what happened to me this morning. I was praying. And I, oh gosh, I don't want to get emotional. I'm trying really hard not to. I told the Lord, I said, you've got to strengthen us. I said, God, your children are getting so weary and I said, I was talking about Cindy and myself, and then I mentioned Cheryl. And I said, God, you've got to strengthen us women if we're going to keep moving forward in this ministry. We need your strength. We're only human beings. And I said, your children, meaning not just us, but all of you, I said, they're so weary. I said, we're just feeling so beaten down that if you linger much longer in our transformation and strengthening us, I don't know how many of us will make it. And suddenly... It was so beautiful. I saw the word and I heard his voice and he said, rest. And I'm like, but I've got so much work to do. But he never said another word. He just said, rest. And today was so quiet. So I rested more. I sat around and I rested. And, and I know that God is still going to be working us. But he's basically telling us, while you're working, rest in me. When it's quiet, rest period physically so that your body can be strengthened because nobody can go seven days a week 24 7 even though i'm trying and so is cindy but our age and stuff you know that comes into play we're human beings but god will give you that time of rest physically but what he was also saying is rest in him because whatever needs to be done he will give you the strength to get through it and to do it he will give anything and everything you need equipped you with whatever in order for you to do the job at hand now let me say one thing he's been showing me a lot is right now is the time where some you're used you're being used but he's putting you in a place of resting and in a place of holding and the place of holding means you may not feel like you're doing a lot but you were before you're in a place of holding because we're about to get called out i don't know how long it's going to be but he's in the middle of training He's in the middle of ref the last refining and purifying. And he is putting some of us in holding. And those of us who are still being used are putting in our uh, times of rest. Today was one of mine. He let me rest a little more. Okay? And he'll give you times off where you just kind of have a refreshing or go have a little fun. And then you're back on a heavy job. Some of them, um, like Cindy... He told me, he said, told her to rest because she was badly injured. Satan tried to pull her out. The Lord showed me this. He said, Satan tried to literally take her life, but he showed me in a vision two angels, one on each side of her head that had their hands up under her head and by her shoulders. And he showed me how they kept her from being killed. But she still is injured and struggling with this injury and it's causing her not to be able to do as much. But the Lord said, tell her to rest. Because the job coming is going to be very powerful, and he's going to need her. But then he said just now, you must act upon your willingness. Don't be lazy. You must act upon it. He said, willing, act on that will. Don't sit on it. In other words, when you say, God, let your will be done in my life, I am willing to do whatever you want. He said, don't just sit on that. Act upon that will. And how you do that is you seek him out to what the will is so you can be about your father's business. And that's what he was talking about. Act upon it. Don't just sit there and go, okay, God, I'm ready. You just kind of move my feet wherever you want them. And you know what I mean? You need to be active in the will of God. 
by seeking out what that will is. Your willing heart connected with his will makes a perfect. Do you understand? So he said that. Then all of a sudden he said, you know, there's times when you need to rest and need balance. And he said, but don't let your rest become laziness. And Cindy was saying, well, how do you know? And I said, this is what God is showing me as we were speaking. That when you are so weary, you can't keep your eyes open. You're ill. You're dealing with something really heavy, whatever. It's time to stop and go rest. Close your eyes and rest. And if you're emotionally just spent, you can't even think straight. You're so distressed. You're in tears. It is time to stop and rest in your father. Go sit with your father and be renewed, be restored, be refilled. Let him just refresh you. When your body is to the point of exhaustion because we're human, you can't just go and go. I had a word for someone today where God said, make sure you rest. Because if you don't rest when your body needs it, Satan will take that and use it against you. How? He will use it against you by bringing in sickness, colds to start with, can go into deeper illnesses. He can do it by affecting your brain. Being with uh, sleep deprived is huge. It can affect your brain. It can affect your thinking. It can affect your um, you know, decisions you make. You may not be thinking straight. You're not going to make the best decision. You're going to kind of just get through it, just get over it. Let's just, find whatever, just so I can get through this because I'm tired. You're not going to make the best choices. So what God is saying that he needs you to be willing, but he needs you to walk in that willingness. He needs you to act upon it. Seek him out. What is it that he wills for you? What is it that he wants you to do? You can't just sit on it or you become a lazy child. And resting is important, but don't let the rest become laziness to where you never do anything. You always find excuses. This is important, having time with him. There was a word from somebody, they sent it to me, and I was like, Lord, am I doing enough? Am I having enough time with you? Because I fight with weariness terribly. I fight with pain. I fight with exhaustion. I fight with these illnesses, infirmities, and I pray against them. I stand in faith. Whatever you want today, God, I'm on it. I'll do it. Okay, there's the willingness. Now, how do we act upon that? Even though this is chronic, you make time. I got up this morning and I sat in my chair and I said, Lord, let's just have time together. And a lot of times I'll get caught up for the night before I sit with him. And this morning he said, no, from here on, don't put them first, put me first. Don't sit and try to get caught up on approvals or any PMs or anything. Go have time with me first and foremost, then go do that. So I'm taking it a notch up, in other words, okay? I'm taking what I normally, my routine, and change it up because I'm willing Okay, so I said, Lord, what do you want me to change? What is it you want me to do so that I am in a perfect place with you? Not perfect person, in a perfect place, spiritually. I'm not slacking. I'm not being lazy. I'm not making excuses. At the same time, I'm taking the time that he shows me. There's time to rest. There's a time and a season for everything. There's a time to rest, a time to work. Okay, and that time right now is to find the balance of the two. Because right now, God is allowing us to go through testings, through firings, refinings, and it's tough. And there's moments when your body and your emotions just can't take anymore. You have got to rest. Do it and rest in the Father. Go sit with him and say, Lord, I just want to rest and sit with you. And I pray you replenish me, refresh me, re-strengthen me, talk to me. And sit quietly and just sit with him. He will do that. You might doze off a little. That's fine. When you get up and get going, get back about your father's business. And do everything he says. Obedience is huge. It's very important right now that we stay obedient. Okay? So in other words, God is going to give you times of rest. Times of, of times where he'll work you a little bit. But right now he's in uh, helping us in this way. Be strong because I got your back. Be strong because I'm going to fight the battle with you and for you because the battle's God's. Lean on my understanding and my strength. And when it gets to be too much, come to the altar. Come to me. Lay it all down. Let me comfort. Let me restore. And we'll get you back going. 
but come to me. This is where our strength is. This is where our lifeline is. And he's been doing it with me. I just came to him this afternoon and just let the tears come. They weren't, I wasn't bawling, but I was just tired and just feeling weak. And I just needed uh, some answers. And I needed him to touch me and strengthen. And, and he did. And I felt it lift. And I left and I came back again tonight and I felt it again. Just enough strength to keep me going. So what you have to remember is when it gets to be too much, he didn't leave you. He's right there. Remember that word he gave not long ago as well. His hand is already out there with you, in front of you. Just take it. He's sitting right, he's right beside you, sitting, standing, whatever. Just take his hand and say, God, I need help now. I need to be strengthened. I need you to encourage me. I need you to pick me up. I need you to let me know I'm still going. I'm still okay. Now, if you start getting thoughts of your past, of you're never going to amount to much, well, look at all the things you've done. Those are all lies. Please rebuke them. Because if you don't, you become your worst enemy. Satan will have a heyday, and you're encouraging it by, by, by feeding those thoughts, feeding them. Well, you're right. I, I did do that. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe I did that. You know what? There's not one of us that have not sinned. There's not one of us that have not made major mistakes in our lives. There's not one of us that still don't. Worry, anxiety, any of it, all of us, having bad thoughts, you're like, where in the world did that come from? None of us, because we're all, every single one of us are under attack. But this is what God, he just showed me the word unity. Thank you, Lord. He wants us to have unity together. Stay in unity. Put your arm around each other, cyber-wise or physically. Look, I'm here on your side. Let's pray together. I would love to try. I don't know how much I can do, but I would like to try to have more prayer time together with you guys. Pray together. But then it's just me and you guys. You need to be out there praying with each other, on the phone, physically, cyber. We need to be encouraging each other in unity, Lord said. That's what he's just saying right now is unity. Tell them to be more in unity with each other. Because the strength's coming from God to us, and then he has us to have fellowship with each other and prayer and encouragement, just like I'm doing right now. He kept telling me, go tell him strength, strength, strength. I'm like, okay, you wouldn't be keep saying it if you don't want me to go live. I'll go now. Stopped everything and went live. We need unity. We need to be there for each other. Let me tell you something. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you believe. I don't care what your political views are. I don't care who you voted for. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is your soul and, and, and staying strong and serving God with all your heart. And it wouldn't matter to me who you are, what you've done, anything. I'd be the first one to put my armor on and say, let's pray together. I'm here for you. I'm the first one to say it because none of us are perfect. And God loves you right where you are just as you are, and so do I. Okay, even those that have come against me, I don't know who it is. I saw a comment and said, you didn't want me to pray for you, but I did anyway. It's like, I had no idea. I, 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 you know, I, I don't care if you pray for me. I don't know what they were upset about. I have no idea what happened. And that's fine. You know what? It's okay. You don't have to like me. You can attack me all you want. I'm still going to care about you and love you. I won't put up with anything during service, but I'm still going to love. Okay. The thing I want you to remember is what God said tonight. Lean on his strength and, and reach out to him when you're hurting really bad. Start pleading the blood. Start quoting scripture. Okay? And let's get together as often as we can and pray. Okay? I can't do it all on my own. I want you guys to do it yourselves as well on, your, on the side. Okay? So let's go ahead and we'll pray right now. So Lord Jesus, we just come together in unity, Lord. We ask God for the blood of Christ to be poured on each and every one of us, on our family members, on our extended family members. We pray, God, for your strength, for your restoration to touch us now, God. Strengthen us. Give us what we need, Lord, to keep going in the fight of faith and to stand strong in spite of. Help us to praise you anyway. Help us to pray. Help us to fast. Help us to please you, God. Lord, we just ask that you will help us to be in unity with each other. That we will be there for each other so much more than we've ever been. Because there's strength in the unity, in the, in the unity of prayer. 
I pray, God, for healing and restoration for every single person, God, if they're dealing with anything physical or emotional or mental. We pray against every single infirmity, God, and sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask, God, that your blood just pour through everyone's veins and heal and restore, Lord. We thank you, God, that you love us even though we're still yet sinners. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and that because of you we can make it to heaven and we'll get to that finish line. Help us to be a beacon of light, God, in the dark place. Help us to show the love of God no matter what. And Lord, please forgive us for our failures, for our shortcomings, for the times that we don't act like we should because we're frustrated, because we're just tired. God, we're so human, and, and we all don't want to be that way. But we ask that you will forgive us for our human ways and for our shortcomings. Help us to please you with our whole heart because we do love you, Lord. We so love you, and we're so thankful for the sacrifice you made. We're so thankful, God, that we can be used in these last days. We pray that you will get us ready to be called. Make sure that we are ready so that when you call out, we hear your voice. In Jesus' name, amen.